Hey, what's up, guys? This is Trav, and we are back again with another episode of Trav Talks. Today, I'm talking to Ryan. Say hello to everyone, Ryan. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is worse. It's the worst. No, actually, it's just worse. Um, <clears throat> today, we are reviewing Spider-Man Far From Home. What a ride of a movie, and what a experience the MCU has given thus far to... <clears throat> finally give us a, well, Spider-Man 2, because if they do end up making a Spider-Man 3, which they will, <laughs> it, it, like, and if it's good, and as good as this, then they will have surpassed even Raimi's trilogy, <laughs> because Raimi's trilogy has at least, at least one misstep in my head, and in my opinion, um... So, I just want to full-blown warn you guys, we will be spoiling it down the road. We're First, we're going to do a non-spoiler review on this movie. Uh, <clears throat> me and Ryan saw it together, and we had kind of a, I don't know, I'll tell them a little bit about it. We had this, like, where you, he couldn't sit with a situation, so that was, like, really, that really was stupid, because, like, the theater was packed, and, like, we ended up getting his ticket, like, right whenever he showed up, so it was just... I don't know, like, that was kind of weird, um, and some of the guys you were sitting with seemed a little odd, I don't know if you, I don't know if you got that, but there was that one guy with a hat, and I was like, uh, like, he was really tall, like, and he just kept leaving the room, and he's also taking selfies of himself during the movie, I don't know if you even caught that. <laughs> usually, like, uh, usually you're a lot better at, like, catching a lot of that stuff than me, because, I mean, I'm just, I don't know, I mean, yeah, if it's, like, physically affecting me, I mean, obviously I mean, I'm going to notice it. I didn't notice that he was... I guess I maybe mean, I, you noticed the selfies because y'all were, like, behind me, but, I mean, I really didn't look in either Yeah, I mean, he, he was, he was like, on the end of the row you were on, and I, 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 I'm not surprised that you didn't notice just because, like, I would rather have been more locked in like you. <laughs> like, I would, I would rather have been more, like, into the... Like, I was into the movie, but... Right when he did that, I don't know what it was, but I turned, and as soon as I turned to look, I guess I was just trying to, like, see you, but I don't really know why, because I was, like, watching the movie, but it's just one of those mindless things that you do where you're not really thinking about it, but, like, I turned and looked, and, like, he was taking selfies of himself during the movie, number one, why? Like, it's just, like, it was on this level, and I, th I think he just kept getting bored, and I'm just sitting there thinking, like, it's not a boring movie, like, what, <laughs> like, I, it's, like, it's, like, the opposite of, it. it's, like, the homecoming level of, like, it's, like, it's good, so why are you, I don't know, that was really weird, but, anyway, <laughs> um, so, what we will do is not, just not spoil this movie for you guys, I don't wanna, um, at first, and we're gonna give a rating at the end of this non-spoiler section, and then, I didn't wanna split two episodes apart and do a spoilers review separate because there's just no point when we could just kind of cut it in half and do a spoiler. So if you haven't seen the movie, you are safe right now, and I will warn you when we go into spoilers later on. So, Ryan, general thoughts. Did you enjoy and like Spider-Man Far From Home? The funny thing is, I mean, it's this much later, and I don't think I've ever, I've, I don't think I've given one cent of an opinion of any kind. Yeah, um, we, we, we've literally saved the opinions just for this podcast, so we can literally just discuss it man-to-man -man here, so, yeah. Uh, overall, uh, I honestly, uh, and I've given it, uh, quite a bit of thought. I almost wish, like, because Trav's seen it twice now, but I almost wish I could see it again just to get a cemented opinion, maybe. But uh, general thoughts, I um, really liked it. I mean, it's <laughs> as much as I can like, you know, just like, oh, the newest MCU film. Uh, obviously, you're not going it, to... It's kind of... Okay, uh, here's a here's a good picture um, good comparison. It's kind of like coming down from, uh, Avengers one to Iron Man three is kind of how I feel right now. Uh, where, you know, we're kind of with end game. I, I feel like, I don't think it's really burnout from Marvel. I mean, it's, I mean, it, it may be a little fatigue just to be fair, but honestly, like I, I just really, I liked it, but I, it's not a 10 out of 10 movie by any means, 
<laughs> like at at all. Like let's let let me ask you this: as a sequel to, like, let's just look at it as there's Spider-Man: Homecoming, and this is literally the Spider-Man Two of this universe. Do you think it's pretty, like, uh, what's the word? Like, does it live up to it? Is it a pretty good sequel in your eyes? Um, I really here's the thing though. Like, I really intensely love Homecoming. Like, Homecoming to me is way up there with, I mean, something, I don't know if it's up there like, oh, with Infinity War and all that. I mean, it's pretty high up in my top Marvel films ever, like, flat out. But Far From Home, I don't know if it lives up to that level, even though I will acknowledge that it does a lot of stuff better i guess it is a bigger movie there's a lot more going on it's literally you know it's actually quite literally like a big kind of trip because the movie is literally about the family going or not family the school the class going on a trip to europe and i was take i was i was thrown off by that at first when they first revealed that it was going to be like they go somewhere else, because I was like, well, isn't Spider-Man movies kind of just cemented in, like, New York? But, hey, this is the MCU, and this is... I've talked to Ryan about this on the phone just a little bit right before recording this. We didn't really share each other's thoughts on the movie, but I I did mention certain things to him about, like, this is the MCU. What they have been doing is something different. And what they did with this entire movie, and we'll go into it in a little bit with spoilers, but... They do a lot of unexpected things in this movie that everything that was unexpected was an absolute joy. Like, none of the unexpected stuff was, like, a bad thing. Like, everything that they, every direction they went in, like, down to, like, Mysterio being Mysterio, like, it it paralleled with the comics but it also did its own thing, and that's what the MCU does best. And I think that's one thing that people just don't sit to understand, these people that, like, hang on to the Raimi trilogy and hang on to these other things and are just like, oh, the MCU sucks because they're doing it so different. It's like, well, just open your mind to the idea, like, you have these other movies and you own them and you can watch them anytime, but, like, this is just something different. The fact that a Spider-Man movie was able to surprise me tells says a lot because they could have just done kind of the the good old story and hey i would have loved it because i've been a spider-man fan my whole life spider-man i've told her i said it to ryan earlier spider-man is the reason i'm a superhero fan like and the reason i'm a, I'm a comic book fan and it, like so in a way it led me into the mcu love and what I'll say about this, what I'll say this is, I, I'll just say this really, really quick because it has nothing to do with the actual review of the movie, but I had no hype for this movie. This is the first Spider-Man movie that I just didn't, it's not I, It's not that I didn't care, it's just right before seeing it, I had to remind myself like, oh yeah, Spider-Man Far From Home is going to be awesome. And like, to, like, to further like, that and, point, and, and, that is what I mean. Like I, I think part of that yeah, might have been from, what from Endgame, is, it's kind of a little bit of fatigue. Endgame to this, it felt really, um, yeah, it, it is fatigue. It's just this like, it's not that we are done with the MCU, because me and Ryan are the most open-minded people about like, well, we're still going to go and watch these. Yeah, like, I'm not going to wait gonna, till not, Red box to see oh spot no like. yeah it's just like we're gonna go see this it just it took this movie though to be like yeah the mcu is still relevant after endgame stop thinking that like it might be you know like endgame was a great closing story for like characters and stuff but this is also like well spider-man is still out there and he's still continuing and i was totally open-minded to his second chapter into just and it's kind of like what they've done with the Hulk, where it's like they just have kept, they've they've other Spider-Man movies. I'll say this: other Spider-Man movies have done it like this. He becomes Spider-Man, and the character growth is inside the movie. There's a lot of there's not a lot you could do with a lot. With, I mean, there's great movies out there that have great character growth for a two-hour movie. Like there's I can't think of any right now, but there's some great examples out there of movies that like by the end of the movie, their characters fully matured. But same thing with Thor. Thor has like matured so much. <laughs> Fat Thor, you know, like that's kind of a bad example, but he he's changed as just a person 
in the MCU, and I think that's really what they've been going for with Peter in this for so long, is uh, there's a lot that happens in this movie that is like, okay, this is the movie for Peter to grow up. Like, because I've always been wondering, like, where are they going with Spider-Man in this? Like, Homecoming is a great movie, and I love it, and I think I even texted Ryan, like, last time we watched it, when we watched the MCU, I was like, I don't know what it was about Homecoming this time, but it was, like, better than it's ever been. Like, I don't know what it was, it just may have been a great night in general. It just, like, something about it was like, they are really developing Peter Parker here, like, it's... But it's happening over a few movies, kind of like the Hulk, where the Hulk has had his character growth through different movies without doing a solo film. But in this example, this character does have solo movies, but they are not just allowing Peter to, in one movie, go from, like, the kid that doesn't know what's going on to Spider-Man. That's what I've been waiting for. This whole time as a Spider-Man fan is, okay, I love the MCU, and I love Tom Holland as Peter Parker, but, like, when are they going to give me the moment where he becomes Spider-Man? I won't say how and I won't say why yet, but they give it to me in this movie, and I could not be more hyped for, like, seriously, like, Spider-Man 3, if that was just somehow the very next MCU movie, I'd be so giddy about that. Like, just... Like, they leave you with a cliffhanger, all of this stuff. I'm just literally like, I can't believe this is, like, it literally hit me in this movie. So the fact that I had no expectations going into this movie, and then all of a sudden just they skyrocketed to this other level, like, I absolutely loved it. Like, I feel like this was the Spider-Man movie as a fan. This is just from a fan's nostalgic perspective, is... As a fan of Spider-Man, I am extremely satisfied. Like, I've been a fan of this character my whole life, and I'm just extremely satisfied with where they're taking him, even though it's different than a lot of other incarnations. And what Ryan said earlier, and you made a great point, there's other, there's different Spider-Man incarnations in comics. Yeah, like, when Homecoming came out, I think that's that was the biggest test. I think that was a huge test of everybody... Really trying, like we all had Spider-Man fatigue. Yeah, really, was, really was, hanging yeah. in. It was a true test of the fans and the fandom, and well, and you know, you were already an MCU fan. If you're like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see this no matter what. Anyway, so I was 110 percent like Homecoming, like for what it is compared to Far From Home. I do kind of regard Homecoming as like a 10 out of 10 movie. It's so tight i love like every second of it to the max (laughs) like but like with far from home maybe on a second watch maybe i'll consider like giving it you know something you know giving it like more of a like liking it more (laughs) i just don't it's not like oh it's like you like you i like it it, but it's like oh i feel like i should like it more but then again who cares if i like you know what that that (laughs) that give that that is right there shows great characters and great stories if a movie can make you feel like man i'm i'm almost sad that i don't like it enough like that it that shows good like they that in a way you are aware man they tried hard like it well, is like, like I said, it, it is you know. a bigger movie. Uh, I guess that's looking at it more. Well, Endgame's been in out way, for a but... while now, so it's a bigger movie in general, just because of what was on Peter's shoulders, like the whole story. You know, like I like we won't go into the full blown story right now, but like with Tony and Endgame, it's like that. That in itself was like that. That's what's that's what's carrying over into this movie, like. Homecoming was like, okay, Civil War introduced Spider-Man into the MCU. That's all it was, and Black Panther in the same movie. Somehow made it perfect. There you go, Russos. You know what you're doing. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming was like, okay, that kid, that Peter Parker that shows up in the movie is going to have his own movie. Is going to have his own movie. And it was a success, and it ended up being really good. And then that same director comes over and is like, hmm, but how do I further this character... After the events of Endgame, where he's still alive and undusted and all of that, like, what do we do with it? Well, you just kind of follow some of the comics, like, mix some of the comics together and follow 
like ideas, but also changing things. Because, like I said, that's what Marvel and Disney have been doing with these is just changing things. And I'm totally open-minded to all the change because what they have done with Spider-Man, in my opinion, is kept him like Spider-Man. Um, but also doing something different. Pretty much like how Into the Spider-Verse is. <laughs> that movie is like, that is so wildly different. Multiple dimensions, all characters coming in at the same time, like, and talking to each other and all of this stuff. And yet, it was like a true Spider-Man type movie because it had, it had like, <clears throat> it had loss, it had joy, it had like, it. Ha Spider-Man movies are supposed to have so much heart. And I think they've done a brilliant job so far. I think Spider-Man 3 will be such a highly anticipated movie with the way this one ended. That, like, it's just, like I said, it's just slowly becoming the Spider-Man I've always wanted. Even though I didn't realize, even in Homecoming, that they were going to build up to that. Uh, and it just makes it, it just makes it so good and so MCU. Because... What I'll say is this is definitely one of the better MCU movies when you compare it to, like, it doesn't even, like, you know, let's just, when you sit and think about, like, Thor the Dark World or something, and, like, trying to match that of, like, that doesn't even feel like the same universe because of how happy this movie feels in a way. Yeah, like, it's... it's... because it's, it's, it's the characters, the classmates, I will talk more in the spoiler section, but I will say every single character, uh, happy is not a spoiler, so happy is, like probably one of the best characters in this movie because of like what he you know like how he ends up acting towards Peter because uh you know in the past in homecoming he was just this annoying kid to him and now that things have changed you know Tony's gone it's it's like it's a lot different uh they have each other and let me just say like <sighs> Peter and MJ I don't think could have been better chemistry for a movie like this like that was just like i i was not sold in homecoming at all like okay your it's revealed that your mj like i don't it felt very weird and then i realized where they were going with it and it's like absolutely it's absolutely adorable uh the teacher is more of a character in this movie and i was just like so surprised with how like like, annoying, but in a good way. Uh, there's a lot of stuff where, like, he just is so unaware of stuff, and it makes me, and it just kind of makes you laugh. Like, what I'll say as probably my biggest negative about this whole movie, and what other people have said, I've watched some reviews, uh, I'll agree with some people on this. It's a funny movie, but some of the, some of the jokes just are just, just don't land. Like, you're supposed to be laughing harder, but you're just not. <laughs> like, I don't know. I can't even think of one off the top of my head. But, like, it's just some of the stuff just, like, wasn't as funny as it could have been. It's obvious and not a spoiler that a villain shows up in this movie. So let me just say this. Like, whenever the whenever Mysterio finally shows up, like, <clears throat> there's kind of like a, a build-up to it. And I totally forgot that there was going to be Mysterio in this movie because I was so locked into this these kids' vacation. Like, everything and all the shots and everything, it really felt and reminded me of, like, growing up and going, taking a vacation and certain things being a certain way where, like, kids can sometimes, like, separate and do their own thing. It just reminds me exactly how it would actually be if, like, you, you know, when you went to college and you take, like, a trip with your classmates, like, some of that stuff would be the exact same way. Like, it, like, it makes me, some of, it makes some me wish that getting, I would have Some people got getting to, along and some people not. Make, and, makes like, me wish like I would have got to do, like, a vacation, like, when I went to, like, college. Yeah, you're, like, like jealous when you're watching the movie, um, like, oh, they get to be in Europe. Like, it, it's, like, yeah, it feels and, I mean, so real. You know, like, where I went to college, that's what they did almost all the time, like with science or history or art or whatever. Um, they would do stuff like that. But 
Honestly, I think that's, uh, I, I, I'm always a huge sucker for like road trip movies. That's like one of my favorite things ever is just a big road trip in a movie. So that's easily my best, you know, like that's my best impression of this movie. Like that's my, that's the best part of it for me. Um, and just about like, like you said, with the jokes and stuff, like little stuff, it's the little stuff. Like for this movie, there's really no big problems at all with it that I have. But it's just a bunch of like little stuff that's just it either doesn't land or it doesn't click, or it just I was like, oh, I'm not crazy about that. But nothing big. Like a lot of this movie, I really, really liked. But, like, even with Homecoming, like, and me trying to think of some negatives, there's definitely not as many negatives as I can think of for Far From Home. But it is due to it being a bigger movie, and there's way more going on. So, obviously, there's probably going to be a lot more to, like, have a say in. (laughs) So, to kind of wrap up the non-spoiler section, because, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, it has been so hard this entire time behind the scenes here, trying not to just, like, because I said something earlier, and that's just obviously cut out, like, I just simply said something and realized, holy crap, I can't say anything really about this movie without spoiling it, which shows me, like, Collider Heroes, like, they, uh, <clears throat> they reviewed it, and, um, Koi was like, <laughs> and Jeremy Johns' joke was also like, I watched it, <laughs> like, that's, like, that's as far as you can go, like, because, like, everything about this is basically a spoiler, so, we're gonna open up the spoiler section, but before we go, before we do that, Ryan, what would you give Far From Home as just a rating from 1 to 100, like, a full-blown, like, an MCU Spider-Man sequel, like, how it was portrayed, how good did it do? Like, what score would you give it? I'm going to land it at a 87. I think that's... Very, a high B, so there you go. I think go. that's very that's, fair. That's um, and, I mean, it would have been an A, but it's just not. Maybe on another viewing, I'd be, like, willing to give it a higher score, but... As it is right now, I think that's fair for sure. I'll say a 93. It's it's definitely it's high up there for me and definitely one of the one of the favorite of well, MCU films and a great adaptation of a Spider-Man sequel that honestly, I didn't know until I watched it that I've always wanted. I'll say it like that. I've always wanted this movie and I didn't even realize it until I watched it. And totally surprised. A lot of surprises in this movie. So now we're going to open up the spoiler section. So for those of you that have not seen Spider-Man Far From Home, I hate to lose you, but (laughs) I'm sorry, but you have to go because then you'll be spoiled. But if you want to be spoiled, then stick around because there'll be plenty of it. I can't. (laughs) I'm just going to open up a can of worms here. And thank you to everyone that joined that have not seen the movie uh go see spider-man far from home by the way it's like i like this is a blockbuster movie like a spider-man 2 like go see it like stop stop watching game of thrones and just freaking what what are you doing go go watch far from home like i don't like i don't understand like some people just wait so long to watch a movie even though they're like i really want to see that and then months and weeks later they're like oh yeah i didn't end up seeing that i'm just like Go watch it. Like what? Like what's holding you back? Like anyway. So thank you guys for watching. That uh didn't want to. Don't want to be spoiled. So now spoilers. Heads up. <laughs> J- Jonah Jameson reveal was like the best thing I have ever. Like one of the best like cinematic superhero movie experiences of just like my jaw dropped and I think I literally said like oh my god they've done it and I like grabbed Ashley like I cannot like believe it and even she was shocked and she's like really only watched through the Raimi movies like one time so that is insane like I know that's skipping straight to the end but like that is insane like I could not believe that they did that I loved the reveal a lot. I think um, it, 
I think on its own. Total homage to Raimi Spider Man. Yeah, fans. Like, like, it's definitely a moment for the fans. I just 110% love, you know, J.K. Simmons in general. So, I mean, like, even if he wasn't Jameson before, that would still be awesome. Like, he's just amazing. So. <laughs> just the fact that you, you, your mind kept saying, or at least my mind kept saying all th- since Spider-Man three, like, yeah, he'll never be back. He'll never be back, but he's back. If only for this cameo, hopefully it's a lot more. I'd be cool, but. Oh yeah. I, yeah I, like I, it's, I think it's for the fans. I think it's for this cameo for now, but they would be sinning. <laughs> If they didn't somehow use him at least another time, like in some, because the Daily Bugle is a huge part of just Spider-Man's story. Like it's always been this hovering shadow of like a company, kind of like um, <clears throat> the freaking whatever it is in, in Metropolis for Superman, like the newspaper company. Uh, it's the same situation where it's like that. It's important to the story, uh, usually. So, I don't know. Is Peter Parker going to be able to become a photographer now, now that everyone else is Spider-Man? I, yeah, it's a really I weird know. direction it, to go. Yeah, it's a, but, um, but like I said in the non-spoiler section, like it's a surprise, though. So, I love it. Like I love that they're just unexpecting, you know. <clears throat> it's it's going to make Spider-Man 3, like, and further going movies that have Peter Parker in it, really interesting because... Like, like my biggest question is like, okay, in the next movie, then how is he gonna hide that? Like, is he actually gonna keep lying? Like, is he going to finally just admit it? Or maybe they pull the Spider-Man Two storyline, or like from the comics, where he, the the suit in the trash can shot, or he quits. Uh, you know, they could they could go so many directions, but that's that's what makes this movie good, in my opinion, is like the unexpected. And I'm and I'm so excited to see where Tom Holland as Spider Man goes next because I personally am like they are developing this character. Because <clears throat> um, I said it, I said it to you on the phone. Like I I didn't realize it. Like Homecoming, I just I, like I was I was just wondering this. The, these questions were in my head. Okay. No, not being able to use spider senses yet, and they didn't even acknowledge it. Like they didn't, he didn't say, "Oh, I, th- you know, I just can't tap into him right now. I can't use him." Because in Homecoming, using a suit, Tony gave him a powerful suit that where you're basically like Iron Man, and you have like this targeting system, and then, you know, and uh, the Iron Spider suit is cool and everything. But I've always felt this like, yeah, but he's supposed, but for the original, like the character, he's supposed to be able to do all of this stuff on his own. Like that's not just like me hanging on to my love for Spider Man. It's just, it's just literally what the character is. That would almost be like suddenly taking all of the gadgets out of Batman. Like just he only uses like martial arts training and all of that. Like that would be like as weird as that where it's like, well that's always been there. So why are they taking it away? But little did I know, Ryan, like they were developing Peter Parker I mean slowly in each movie. The and biggest I just didn't the see biggest it giveaway to the fact I mean that they're developing like developing Peter is like Tony saying, yeah, if, there, if you're nothing without this suit, like, then don't you shouldn't, shouldn't wear, wear it. Yeah. It is a, it is kind of a nod to like, okay, he could be able to do all this on his own, but like, I don't know. That's, that's neither what I liked or disliked about homecoming. Like a lot of people did have that problem and it kind of goes well, against Well, and they character. introduced the idea in civil war that he had only had the powers for six months at the time. So I should have just kind of known, like, okay, this is kids are just starting out, um, and they're going to. I just, I just had my doubts. I don't know. I just had my doubts. Like, are they really gonna develop Peter like this different, where he just doesn't have stuff that Spider Man is supposed to have? And little did I know, like, the scene in this movie where he, like, where Mysterio just creates the illusion in that little, I'll call it like the hallway, it's like a bridge thing in the building, whatever you call those, 
And then he's just like, okay, it's Peter, <laughs> Peter Tingle, <laughs> like, and just that running joke of the Peter Tingle, like, and he, and he just closes his eyes, which was cool, because we've never seen that with that suit yet, of just like, okay, so when he closes his eyes behind the mask, does that mean, it's like, yeah, uh, and just full-blown uses his suit, and that felt so much like, okay, that's exactly like in the games, when your, like, little thing is going off your spider sense, and you can, just, you have to just dodge everything, and it's just, it was so... Like, it was Spider-Man to me all of a sudden. I was just like, okay, that's awesome. And, like, how he eventually gets to Mysterio to take him down, you know. He was, like, hanging from the hanging from the ceiling, grabbing him. He's just like, yeah, uh, this is over, Beck, or whatever. It's just like, okay, this is Spider-Man. Like, I don't know. Like, I knew that he couldn't do anything about the flaming guy. But just through the whole movie, there was just this, like, is he just going to stay this kid that can't do anything about anything? I was just worried, and whenever he finally is like, okay, I'm using my, I'm using my spider sense, I'm using my powers, it just became so, like, like, open to me that, like, okay, I see where they're going with this. This hasn't been done yet. Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, basically, like, character development inside of their movies, like, this is like a, every single movie that Tom Holland as Peter is in is slowly like it's slowly teaching him lessons like he's already lost someone before but then now he had to lose Tony and like and the whole the, like let's I'll I'll move on to this part of this what I really like is this Tony Stark shadow through the whole thing really made this movie like it really added to it because I th honestly now it makes real a lot of sense to me now like I like Tony dying was really hard to see in like a good way um just closing out that character but I I've always thought that was perfect he starts he started the franchise he should end it and like and just die in the end I've always kind of just thought that I didn't think they'd actually do it by the way in Endgame was just like I did not think they were gonna do this but they did but the fact that Peter has that on his shoulders now. Like, he's gone, and now you have to do everything on your own. Like, there's no Tony to make suit for you. I think everything that they've done to open up a new chapter is actually pretty perfect. Because, you know, him seeing Iron Man everywhere and everything, like, it's just, it adds so much to it because, for one, we're all invested as audience members to Tony Stark, like Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man, we just are, we all have, like, there's an emotional attachment to it, so, it's amazing, like, I'm just blown away by that, like, uh, because now it's, like, people questioning him, like, are you gonna be the new Iron Man, basically, like, I, I didn't even think about it until I started watching the movie, like, oh god, people are gonna start looking up to him as, like, uh, you actually have to step in as Iron Man and save the day because it's New York City. It's a Spider-Man movie. He saves people from New York, where he ends up flying around with MJ, like swinging around with MJ. I was just like, this is this is Spider-Man now. Now he's gonna just, you know, like the introduction to Amazing Spider-Man Two was like the best part of that movie where he's just a normal Spider-Man day saving the day. That's what I've been waiting on. Is instead of all these adventures on the side and everything, I've just been waiting, like, okay, New York City, <laughs> Spider-Man doing his thing, when's it gonna happen? And now it's, like, introducing, like, pretty much the next movie. <laughs> the next Spider-Man movie should should do it. But that's the thing, is um, I've definitely... Uh, I w it's kind of like, like me and Godzilla in a weird way, like, where... Um, I'm definitely not as severely super attached to Spider-Man as Trev. <laughs> and it's like with, with a movie like this, it definitely puts me to the test of like how much of a fan fan I am, like how much I really appreciate and how much I really care about, you know? Um, and I think with... I think it's it's in a weird way, um, the it's that's so funny that you say that too, like because I'm like oh yeah the road trip was like the best part of this even though that's not Spider Man and yet and yet inside of the road trip here's one thing that I'll highlight really quick and I think you can jump off of it is like 
one what they balance perfectly is okay, Peter's on a road trip. He's gone he's away from New York City. Aunt May secretly packed his suit his suit just in case. Okay, that's kind of our suitcase, but anyway, like like she does that and he's he's literally taking a break. Tony's gone. He just wants to take a break. There's a beginning scene where he's just like, I just really need this vacation. Um but yet he's having to balance the relationship that he wants with MJ um and still be Spider-Man cuz Shield contacts him he, they force him into something that he doesn't want to want to be a part of because he just wants the girl of his dreams like that's all and that is so Spider-Man story that that's what it's been is just like the trying to balance that back and forth is like that's what it is, and, like, even if you're not, like, as attached or much, like, of a fan, like, I think that even you, like, know, like, that in itself is, like, makes the whole road trip thing more, almost, more worth it as a, as the story, I guess. It is, it is cool, because, I mean, it does lend itself to have a lot more going on, like I said earlier, since it does make everything a lot bigger, um, so the stakes are definitely the highest they've ever been, um, when it comes to Spider-Man. Uh, can I say that? Cause I'm, I'm referring to everything Spider-Man. One reason that I feel like the stakes are really high in this movie and immediately when the action kicked in with the illusions of like the water monster and all that, the elemental stuff, like... I'll say this, I'm such a Spidey fan that most of you out there that are listening to this spoilers review, like, let me know in the comments if you already knew in your heart and soul, like, okay, in the comics and in the video games, like, it's mostly the games for me, and in the TV show, like, Mysterio was always up to something, and he's an actor, and he's, like, he's an illusionist, he's... He's like you know he's he's all fake like everything that is like his powers and all that aren't real. Did you know that or did you actually think like like okay he's actually going to be possibly an Avenger and all of this stuff? Like the movie was trying to do a twist, but like it's one of those twists where the fans already know the twist is coming. I knew from the very beginning like he's up to something. And if they'd go the route where he stays good, it would have been really weird because he was acting so friendly at the beginning. And it, but it, but so it's more of a, it's more like, it's more worth it that he's so happy and go giddy at the beginning for him to just turn out to be just a complete scumbag. Like, it's more perfect. His whole plan with, uh, Tony's technology, Edith, um, that just, it, that was that's one of my favorite scenes of the whole movie when it reveals that the bar and all of that in there was is just basically most of it was even the drinks like were holographic, so I was just like that's too cool. He has like a team of people and everything. Like what what I felt in this movie was that the stakes were so high. I like it's hard to balance like me believing that the stakes are high, but I already knew everything that he was doing with the elementals was fake. I already knew, like, this has to be fake. Like, this can't actually be Mysterio, like, trying to save the day. Like, it's there's got to be a catch to this whole thing. He's got to be trying to look heroic. Uh, you know, I knew that it was coming. But dang, dude. The fact that they portrayed this fake guy that is just a guy with technology. That's all he is. He's just a man with technology. And yet... I'm think whatever the illusions hit and that whole and Steven agreed with me like that uh like that that whole trips that whole trippy scene like with our first like real fight as him as the actual villain which actually comes really later and I was like okay they're building to that and it's amazing um that whole all those illusions and everything like how do you fight a guy that can do that like that was my immediate thought was like this is truly a Spider-Man movie because Spidey is helpless and can't do anything about this moment even though this is a kid with super strength and webs and all this stuff. Like, he's just a guy 
and yet I believe that he's kind of terrifying. And Jake Gyllenhaal, I'll just put a highlight on him, is like, amazing job. Like, I, I never even really cared for the idea of, like, Mysterio as a villain in a, in a new movie, but I'm so glad we got it just because, like, it, like, he was just awesome. Like, I've always kind of liked Mysterio. He was never one of my favorites. There's like, there's a really hard part in the Spider-Man game that I can't think of right now where Mysterio's the boss fight, and you had to fight, like, a giant Mysterio because <laughs> I guess he was just using his tech and... Like, and to to be believable, because the illusions being, like, they have real destruction. Like, it's this weird thing that we don't really... That's not just something we get to see in movies nowadays, you know what I mean? Like, it's not... So, the fact that it was a Spider-Man movie that brought something to the table where, like, I felt, even though I know that Mysterio is faking all of this, I still feel like, okay, he's a huge threat. Because technology in itself can be threatening. Oh, and CGI top notch. <laughs> yeah, by the way. like the CGI, I don't think could, I don't think could have looked any better for all those illusion scenes and stuff like that, and and even down to the holographic, uh, weird misty one where when MJ and him find it, figure out that that's fake. Like even that was like that is really terrifying to look at. Uh, but I love it, and that's a good thing because it's making me believe that it's actually there. Yeah, like uh. I definitely, I think maybe the, I don't know. I think maybe the biggest gripe about this movie for me might be Mysterio, but it's not really anything. Cause you're supposed to really, you know, not like him. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, but like, I don't know. There was just something, something about the whole vibe of the Mysterio parts now the filmmaking on like the illusion stuff is all fantastic. Like the actual filmmaking of like uh, where it's all trippy and he's like t- you know, yeah, taking he's over literally his in a mind full blown, and all that. That's, yeah, he's literally that's in a really full blown cool. fight like with Mysterio in his because you know there's like a scene where Mysterio is like not even there inside of like a creepy shadowy school cla- school hallway and the Mysterio just pops up behind him and that just reminded me of like the games when you're having to fight Mysterio and he's and he's doing that to you in the games I was immediately brought back like okay this is the perfect version of Mysterio versus Spider-Man like like I, that I thought we'd never get I was wondering like how are they going to do what he can do and all of that and it, it was just it was perfect like, like I said, the scariest thing about Mysterio is that he's gonna do the unexpected to you, and mess with your head, and it very much reminded me of like, like some kind of scarecrow sequence from Arkham. Yeah, that's um, I was gonna it mention. Immediately that, actually. made me think of that. Yeah, like uh, it definitely. But in a movie, which made it. Cool. Yeah, it definitely makes me reminds me of the games. Like that's, I mean, if anything, a Spider-Man movie probably is doing a great job if it reminds me of the games like that much that's really neat and only because peter just keeps getting in his way and so he gets to this mindset of like i don't want to kill this kid but i think i'm going to like you know because he just he was that one of those villains like nothing's gonna stop me you know and they and and by the way they did a perfect job with just the backstory of quentin beck by the way which just meh i didn't know was coming at all just he worked for Tony Stark hello like and was there in the Civil War like the when he was on stage and so in his holographic tech was actually a Quentin Beck design yeah that, that was that, cool that's amazing and like uh Obadiah screaming at the hint that one guy in Iron Man 1 little did I know they were ever going to reference Obadiah ever again <laughs> and and like, and all of a sudden, like that character that he yelled at is brought into this movie. They they did a really good job of like finding things in the old movies to like tie it to. I think that was that brilliant was cool. writing. That was um, you know, Tony Stark firing him. It's like he thinks I'm like over the edge or whatever he said. Like there is a, I think I know what you're getting at with like Mysterio being a little off. Maybe just he's just a little over the top about this whole thing. Maybe you know? maybe that's like, may, may, because it's like the whole all of the Mysterio. I know that he wanted Edith, and that was why. On he, all he of the Mysterio the scenes, back. filmmaking aside, because it's all that's all fantastic. But like 
like it's hard to explain i guess like the vibe of his stuff is just a little off i will say this and i haven't said this in the review yet i may like homecoming maybe a little less i'm 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 gonna have to like because you know steven hasn't seen homecoming so i'm i'm really excited to just literally like just watch that with him and maybe by then this would be out, and he's, like, dying to see this again. He he literally said, like, I have never wanted to watch a movie the very next day. All just really, like, just really bad. So he wants to watch this again, and I'm just like, well, that'll be cool to just kind of Blu-ray both of those, maybe in one weekend or something. But I would have to really get a side-by-side comparison of these two movies. Uh, but I already know this as a fact. Like... As of right now, I think I like Far From Home better, but Vulture was a better villain. Like he definitely. That's, that's like, what like I was Michael gonna say. Keaton. Is I really Michael do Keaton like Vulture a lot better. Like, and and that and that was another like oh my god I've always wanted to see Vulture in one of these movies and they portrayed him pretty much perfectly, even though you know in other versions of him he was just this old bald man in a clock tower with hardly any technology. Like I mean, but they just did it different and that's fine. Like. You know, it was his own version, and it was awesome. Vulture is just, like, a huge highlight in Homecoming for me. Which, by the way, are you seeing the trend? Like, if they do a Green Goblin in 3, every single villain has been, like, a green villain. (laughs) I kind of took notice to that. I was like, okay, the green villain trilogy? It's kind of funny. But, yeah, definitely, like, coming off of Michael Keaton doing Vulture and then seeing Mysterio and what all they did... They really nailed um, Vulture, like, a lot better in Homecoming. But, like, I don't know. Maybe I could say, I don't know. Like I said, I, I just probably have to do a second viewing or something like that for, uh, I guess, Far From Home. or Which, I mean, I've seen Homecoming who, who knows how many times now. But, um definitely love what all they've done with both movies all around. I mean, you can't get much better than like spider because homecoming cemented. I think Spider-Man being probably in my top three favorite, you know, MCU characters in general. I mean, just, I mean, Spider-Man in general is fantastic. I, I mean, as a superhero, I love Spider-Man in general. But for the MCU, I think they have nailed it. And this is just only continuing nailing it. I mean, so no slight against Far From Home, really, other than I just think Homecoming is better. That opinion may change, of course, but like, it's, it's great. Um, but that's the only thing about home, homecoming, no, far from home. That's probably the biggest gripe I have is just the vibe with the Mysterio scenes is just kind of off. I just don't know how to explain it. (laughs) Um, but everything else, I really can't think of anything other than like Trav, I'm trying to think of specifics, I guess, but like I, other than Trav saying, Hey, the jokes didn't really, some of them didn't really land. Yeah. I, I get you on that. <laughs> yeah, you know, that scene with like the Asian guy that like, he just all of a sudden stops. And I swear on my life, Ryan, I had this thought before he said it. The movie is self-aware, and the movie is smart. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Because that Asian guy stops, and right before this scene, I literally, I saw the class, like, walking without Peter anymore. And, like, I noticed, nobody is worried. Like, Peter keeps running off, and even the teacher never notices that the kid. And so I thought for a split second, well, that's kind of a plot hole, like, they're, it, the movie is just making it okay that these people don't notice. But then all of a sudden, he just reveals, like, is nobody noticing exactly what I was thinking is what he said, which put another cherry on this whole Sunday of a movie that was like, okay, there's actually going to be a character that acknowledges 
that Peter keeps disappearing, which, you know, maybe you could have got away with in a 60s version of Spider-Man. But in this, where there's cameras, there's, all you gotta do is, all you gotta do is freaking, like, GPS, like, and see Peter Parker on a rooftop swinging or something to know, like, okay, he's Spider-Man. Like, Te- today's technology is so much better, so it's less believable. They had a lot of like, jabs whole, about the, that. It was a very modern the, movie in that way. Very modern movie, and so and and to put all that together, like I love that MJ wasn't stupid. Yeah, she literally oh, just yeah. figured it out. Oh, yeah. And and I'll say this, like I've went this long without the mentioning acting, MJ, I, but I think she's like probably the best character in this movie in a, in a way. <laughs> oh yeah, like she is fantastic. Like she, I was not sold on her as being in, becoming MJ in the Homecoming, but then I was just like, once I saw, just oh wow! Like it took this movie for me to realize their chemistry is because that that was that's on purpose. It's not. It looks like it's not supposed to. They're not supposed to be together. But then, like, you're just like, holy crap, they're adorable like that. And so I was so happy with the way they end up as, like, a couple at the end. Because I'm just like, that is just... I didn't think that they could do that. Like, and the fact that she, like, figured it out was brilliant. Because there's a scene where, like, you know, uh, Flash says, Sup, dickwad? Like, that whole scene, and Peter's standing by that staircase, and then MJ is sitting there... She said something like, where where you been? And he was just like, I had like a thing or something like some Peter Parker excuse about being Spider-Man. And she has this like, she kind of looks at him. There's the, the, the director did a specific job of showing you before she ever reveals that she knows. You already know that she knows. Like, I noticed it throughout the movie. Like, she's figuring it out, isn't she? And so... Directing and writing in that way was brilliant. So applause to John Watts, like just for directing it in a specific way. Where a lot of good movies out there are the type of movies like this that characters you know what they're thinking without them saying it in dialogue. That's why over dialoguing movie is what makes it suck. The whole vibe, like this is this is one of these things. Like I and I've discussed this with Doug. Many a time, many a time, and I'm glad I'm, you know, saying this on a video, but in general, like, if you look at, I mean, I'm not going to name off everything, no. Um, If you look at, uh, you know, my favorite movies, just movies that I love in general, Not, I'm not going to name off everything, but like Spider-Man Homecoming is a fantastic example that goes right along with Far From Home. I love a movie if it feels like they had a ton of fun working on it. And that goes for anything. But, like, movies especially. And, like, Far From Home is just straight fun. And, like, that was that was the same thing with Homecoming. Like, that's why I love it so much. It's just straight fun. And escapism at its finest. And... It's cool, like it's cool that um, it's cool that you can say that about all the characters. Like every character is like my favorite. <laughs> like I guess, especially when it comes to the yeah. class and everything. Um, yeah, because like I said, they could have been so dull and so just. Like, but it's why are we focusing fun. on these kids like, in this scene right now? Up. But when they when you switch to the kids and not the action, you're okay with yeah. it. Yeah, and I love that. Like it's just like. I love that this is just feels like a real vacation. Like, it's just simply being shot by cameras. <laughs> like, in May, you know, if you can believe that something that is shot with, a like, a film camera is just, like, that real. Um, exactly, like, you know, what you've said about other movies is, like, it just, some movies just feel like a movie happening in front of my face. Yeah. The difference between bad movies and good movies is good movies... Make you feel like, like you said, escapism makes you feel like, you know, you're aware it's not actually happening, but you're you're into it. You're you're fear you're fearing for the characters, and you just like 
You're so invested, and that's what... They've hit out of the park completely a full-blown home run with both of these Spider-Man movies, Homecoming and Far From Home. And a lot of hit, the like, MCU in general. Hit, it just, it's just yeah, fun. Yeah, it hit the man. heart, because like, Spider-Man is supposed to have heart, and they've nailed that in such a like great way, because at the end of the day, he's Peter Parker, he's Spider-Man, but he's just this kid that needs to grow up, and... The fact that they gave me the movie, like I said earlier, I didn't expect it, and I didn't even know I needed it until the movie was over. I was like, they literally developed Spider-Man into, like, like, because Tom Holland, I've said it forever, is my favorite Spider-Man now. Like, it just, it just beats everything. It's more realistic. And I love what Happy says about just, like, you'll never be Iron Man, uh... Tony could barely be Iron Man, like kind of said, like this kind of some paraphrasing, but that's basically what he said. Is uh, you know, like he just made him realize you are Spider Man, and that's what you gotta be. You don't have to live up to Tony. And I love that there was a message right there. That's also, you know, it's also a big message movie, also about no matter how life stresses you out and it gets crazy to just. Try to live up to yourself, and that's it. Don't live up to others. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> like, in a way, when I really think about the full meaning of the whole thing, like, there's a lot of meanings in this movie, but that was a really good lesson. And that's what a Spider-Man movie should do, in my opinion, is there's a lesson to it. Either way, guys, I'm excited for the next chapter of Spider-Man. Rather, that's the next Spider-Man 3. I re highly doubt that just literally that will only be the time that he shows back up, like in a couple of years or three or however long. But um, I'm just excited to see the next chapter chapter for Peter Parker. And um, the the whole thing about the Sp a good Spider-Man story to me is always like uh. there's always another threat on the other side for him to face and him to, to try to mature in and I feel like they've nailed that like now it's probably the biggest threat of his entire life is like everyone knows so how is he going to handle yeah. this and so I'm just extremely like and that also opens up to well if someone wants to go out there and be a freaking villain like and try to kill him then they can yeah show up at his house like stuff like that like Hobgoblin or somebody like that, or if Shocker shows, but heck yeah, dude! Like Shocker was introduced in Homecoming, he probably will show up and just wreak havoc. So to me, that'll be exciting because I've always wanted to see Shocker. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited, guys. That's just kind of our final thoughts on this movie. I think we've kind of talked it out to death. I like I with with with, with what my notes say. Like we've pretty much covered. A lot of stuff. There's just just a great time, like, and hopefully you've seen it if you've listened this long. <laughs> but if you somehow manage to listen to this and be okay with it and not see the movie, go for go watch Far From Home. It's a fantastic time at the movies and just a lot of fun. And especially if you're a Spider-Man fan, it's like it's just one of those things that's gonna it's just gonna make you happy. I. Uh, and I want to know your opinion, guys. Let me know in the comments what you thought about Spider-Man Far From Home. What do you think about um, the MCU thus far? Do you do you think like maybe Endgame should have just been it? Like, what do you like? Do you think they could just keep going? I I personally know that they're probably gonna launch a whole new like kind of like Iron Man 2008 to like what we got now. That that exact amount of movies, but they can do that exact amount of movies, but X Men in the MCU like. They could do that. Like, it's coming. Like, 20th Century Fox is is bought by Disney now. Like, you know what's coming. X-Men's coming. And I can't even wait just for that. Like, who's going to be... Just the curiosity in my head. Like, who's going to be Xavier? Who's going to be Wolverine? Like, it's just, like, all this cool stuff going in my head. Like, Keanu Reeves is Wolverine. I want it. I, you know, he wants to be Wolverine. So, please, let him be it. Um, so... That or Carl Urban. Carl Urban, I, I can picture as Wolverine. I've always wanted that. But anyway, uh, I'll let Ryan say his goodbyes before we wrap this up. Yeah, guys, I was, I'm aware, I think I was all over the place for this, but, um... <laughs> <laughs> the end. Thanks so much for watching, guys. 
Uh, you'll be hearing us later. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys. Check out my channel, even though I don't have <laughs> anything on it anymore. And thank you guys as always so much for watching. Please like, please share, please subscribe, and all that beautiful stuff, guys. And you beautiful people will be hearing me in the next one. Travel out, and peace out.